it started to evolve into more shit. It started to mean more. But that's why I told you it's like a gene factory. You know what I'm saying? We just throwing them out there seeing if they mutate or not. I don't know. Come back later, you got a fucking single cell amoeba. Maybe you come back next week as a fucking full grown boy rapping like you with his face covered. Oh, I, I, that would not surprise me. That's what I'm saying. It don't surprise me. I see it from time to time. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it is what it is. I mean, I understand my role, you know, in, in this whole beautiful thing called life. You know what I'm saying? And First Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods' hour. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods' hour. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods' hour. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower to let them know that it's the gods' hour. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side of that gat is karma, he wet Prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my head. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. We are back with another episode of the God's Hour Podcast with your boy Big Sir Bavelli back in the place to be. La Merca Superior Palace 81 Studios. We are back live in effect, live and direct. It's your boy, Mr. Nine Times. And today's mathematics. Today, today's date is August 8th, 2024. Today's math is build, destroy. When you build, make sure you are not building what can destroy you. Self-destructive coping mechanisms or dangerous activities that build knowledge and wisdom, such as spell work or shooting. I could defend myself from others or harm myself. That's building or destroy to bring peace upon oneself through meditation and proper release. Build an inner positive structure. Make sure you don't destroy what you build or build what can destroy you unless it's necessary. It's a matter of balance. Peace. Yo, uh, I, it's been a fucking crazy, uh, crazy weekend roller coaster ride and shit. And I'm mad that my phone doesn't want to stay on. Like, how do I fucking get it to just stay on? Like, why are you dimming the lights? Why are you trying to go to sleep on me so fucking fast? I got to click this fucking shit. And I don't want to hold it in my hands like a, like I'm a pinchy 16 year old that doesn't know how to keep the phone fucking down. And why do I feel like the mic went down too? That's some bullshit, dog. This is all some some fucking cracker jack shit right here bro i have to hold it on my shoulder look at that on my shoulder like a strap pause yeah yeah but is this too high is this too now i feel like it's too fucking high look at that it's blocking my whole fucking mascara right now jesus christ what the fuck all right i'm gonna have to fucking just deal with it like this fuck it fuck it this was better. This was a lot better. Yeah. Sorry for breaking up the con- continuity of the podcast. Uh, Makami diss me? Hold the fuck up now, bruh. I was watching, and, and peace to the guy, Makami. He came out with, why is Mak doing interviews right now? What the fuck is this I'm seeing right now, bruh? For those who don't know, Makami is one of the greatest rappers of this generation. Probably the best uh, rapper of this generation, just like all around, not just rapping, but like business wise, his whole shit. Why is he doing like interviews? I don't understand what's going on, Mak. Used to be like this real esoteric, only a few people knew who mock and a few only like a few people know really mock you know what i mean if you don't know mock at this point it's very uh understandable because he's not one of these uh artist that's in every outlet in your face all the time that's why i think it's kind of crazy that mock is over here he did a full in-person in uh interview with rosenberg peter rosenberg from hot 97 then he did some other interview with these other dudes, which I only got through like 10 minutes of it because I was tired of when I watch podcasts, I don't really like depending on the dynamic. I, I like the Joe Budden podcast for this, but I like the uh, I don't really like when it's a bunch of people talking over each other when it was Joe Ma and Rory. It was a good dynamic because it was three people. They all kind of were. And Parks, at times he would say he would chime in, but it was a really good balance of one would talk, one somebody else would 
uh, uh, explain their opinion, and then the third would either disagree or agree or however it went. It, it seemed like a good, like three's a good, you know, because if it's just two people, like that's already a good conversation on its own because you get like, well, like let's just say like two people is good, but like one, like they could like just agree with each other if you have three people then it's kind of like you get more of a broader perspective and, and one can disagree with the other two or vice versa or however it goes right but let me just look this up real quick because y'all know i don't do things until the fucking uh until i start i don't have like no pre-production shit it's just kind of like i jump in yeah so it's a uh, shout out to the funniest podcast on the planet that's what that's kind of the um Kind of corny, not going to lie. Is that really the name of their shit? What you thought, the Makami episode, the funniest podcast. Why Why is Why is everybody doing, like, the funny... Like, it started with uh, No Jumper, the, the, the coolest podcast. I know, I forgot who else was. They're, like, the sickest podcast. That should be reserved for Psycho Realm. The funniest podcast. Like, I don't care. This is the God's Hour. This is just the God's Hour, you know? It's the fucking... You know, the whatever. I think it's just corny to add labels on shit. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I, I I just, I don't agree with this shit. But this episode, I only went through probably 20 minutes of it. But it's like these fools weren't even well versed in Makami. They're just talking about a whole bunch of bullshit. And when I want to, when I want to tune into a Makami interview, I... I really don't give a fuck about the peanut gallery. Uh, no, no disrespect, but I'm here to see my, I'm not here to see y'all, you know, the, the three other dudes. Yes. If you're, if you're trying to watch it for some sort of like comedic sort of atmosphere, 85 South show esque, you know, Chico, Carlos, DC young fly. I get that, but it, it just felt like it felt very, um, jumbled i don't know what's the word uh, convoluted right and a lot of the times mock was just sitting there and mm-hmm, you know what i mean mm-hmm, or whatever the fuck i don't want to see that you know you gotta you got an hour with mock and and this is what i get i'd be super fucking mad if i if i booked this shit you know what i mean just because it's like everyone knows all the all the makami interviews out there aren't long you know what i mean you're not getting three hours of mock you're not getting you know, the one, the, the complex one they did with uh, um, Wes, that was a really good one. The Pray for Haiti one, 20 minutes. Rosenberg, that was like a, a, the, his longest interview right now. It's at two hours. I want to say the original uh, interview Mock ever did, the first, first, first one he did with um, Tyrone to Harlem, T and Converse, that was like um, an hour 40. That's the interview I had up. And then they fucking... Tyron basically was like, take this down or we're going to strike you. And I built too much, right, to get stricken down and my channel take it down. So I was like, fuck it. Like, just out of respect. You know what I mean? He could have he could have struck it down and gave me a strike just like Mock did with like a bunch of albums I had posted. But he gave me the respect enough to be like, yo, um, fucking put it, uh, 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 take it down or we're going to strike you. And I respect that. I respect that a lot. So shout out to them. Uh, What else? the the rare interview that i put up that they've literally only aired one time and i literally caught lightning in a bottle because they've never aired that interview again um and if i fucking if i was working on this schedule i wouldn't have been i wouldn't have been able to record it because i think that was when i was working part-time who the fuck is this okay yeah so that's an hour you know, so my whole point is when you have my comedy, you you better make the most of it. If you know, I would love to have my comedy on the God's Hour. Um, I don't see him getting on anytime soon. But you know, once I build my profile, my accolades, I'm not doing it in my cluttered ass room, and I start doing it in my own home studios with the fucking neon signs and the fucking all the bullshit that people. You know, it, it just looks cleaner, but I don't like I to, like I told you, I don't care. I, I I really could give a fuck less. Right. But I'm watching the interview he does with Rosenberg and he's talking about somebody having the mask on a boy with the mask on and he's rapping like you. And right then and there, I was kind of like, 
okay, you know, he's definitely talking about me, in my opinion, because who the fuck else is wearing a mask that's rapping like him, you know? There's not that many people that's rapping with, like, he has the Haiti flag because of that. That inspired me to bring out the Mexico flag. Like, it's very... When you say things in general like that, it doesn't sound in general because a lot of people have done that. You've got very few artists like Michelangelo. He has like some sort of flag. It's not a flag, but it's like some sort of uh, bandana shit around his face. But he's a producer. He don't rap. Uh, he could he could have been talking like Al Davino. Al Davino is very influenced by him, but he don't really even wear the mask like that in his uh, album covers or anything like that. Like really, I had you know we just did the video for High Times. Uh, I wore I've been wearing it pretty much on every album since Green Light Three. So when I seen that, and it's not even like oh like Serbs like he wasn't talking to you. Who the fuck are you? No. I've I've chopped it up with Mott a few times. You know, he's very he's very well aware of who I am. Like, it's not like, oh, and I'm not taking that it as a diss. Like, you know what I mean? Just to go back, like, did Mock diss me? I don't feel like he dissed me, but where I feel like he kind of I don't know, stutter stepped a little bit, if that's what you would call it. He said something about um he wish he got royalties off of it. And I was kind of like, <sighs> it's a little distasteful because you're influenced, obviously, by MF Doom. And if you don't want to outright say that, that's fine. But we all know to deny it would be crazy. But Doom was the best to do it. No one knew. Like, it, it had Doom never said his name on any records. And if he wasn't Zev Love X... He would have like no one knew no one would have known who the fuck MF Doom was on the real. No one had ever seen him outside with his mask off. All his, his interviews, shows and all that shit. He did it with his mask on. Um, But Mach is fucking said in the interview when you kick it with him, he doesn't have his mask on. When it's time to be Makami, he has the mask on in the interviews and in his music videos. Similar to kind of like what I'm trying to do, but I'm not trying to go all the way with it. And I feel like this shit fucking went down a little bit. God damn, dude. Really? This is fucking crazy. Breaking up the whole fucking shit right now, bro. Just stay in fucking place so I can fucking do this show, motherfucker. God damn. Mike Stan, we're going to have to have a heart to heart next time because I'm a fucking cut my finger on myself trying to not go fucking blitz on this whole bullshit right where was i even at with the whole mock shit because i already i already fucking went somewhere else i blanked out um yeah i don't feel like mock this me uh i, I will go okay going back to the doom right so he's obviously influenced by doom i'm influenced by mock I was super in a doom when I was like in high school, right? But it, it's just kind of like everyone, each one teach one, right? So I got super influenced by Griselda at a time where the the fucking the, the, the rap game was hurting really bad. You know what I mean? The rap game was just like on a fucking on a downhill. There wasn't really any like rappers like that that were putting out dope shit. It was just kind of like a drought. You know, pro era came and went. And it was like a void that needed to be filled. And then when Wes and Griselda, Mock, Fahim, uh, Khan, Benny, a lot of people, El Camino, um, what's his name? There was like a lot of like, not just Griselda, like the core members, but like the affiliates around. When they came, they helped usher in a new era of rap that literally saved hip hop. It did, you know, because of Wes we had a resurgence that was co-signed by Styles P, Ray, Ghost Doom, like the, just a whole, like just Webster Hall in general kicked it off. But like you know, things after that, um, and a lot of people started sounding like uh, Griselda. Um, I I, I want to say I'm I don't I feel like I don't rap like Mock. I, I really don't. You look at you know some of his shit, 
his albums compared to like my albums and they're completely different, you know, from the production to the rapping, the cadences, the flows, the bars that we're saying. Mock does a lot of subliminal shots and his new album, I haven't rev- uh, reviewed it yet for the God's Hour, but it's just kind of like uh, just based on the surface level, he's still doing kind of the same sort of things where he's rapping about shit that no one really knows, like uh, being in some hotel or something. Uh, not, and I'm not shitting on him. I'm just saying like this is what he talks about, in my opinion. Uh, subliminals, uh, motherfuckers, this and that, and... Me, I kind of uh, try to talk about my life more now, and a lot of the things are kind of similar, but a lot of things are different, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say that I rap like him. I would say I rap inspired by him, you know, because that's the truth. I'm not going to go on here and be like, oh, no, like completely deny everything. Like, no, like everyone sees it. Everyone knows. Everyone knows the flag. Everyone Everyone knows, bro. There's like you can't pull the wool over people's faces, you know. So I'm not about to cap on the program and be like, "There's no way." Like, you're fucking faded if you think that I'm influenced by Mock. Like, no, you know. But I, I just feel like for him to be to say that he wants royalties is kind of crazy, you know. Like, I don't even want to get in a in a no crazy shit. I really don't because I know. Look at my fucking hair. My shit is crazy right now. I don't want to get in in, in a damn, bro. I, fu- I sweated the fuck out of my hat right now. I just bought this hat and look at already sweat marks and all that shit. That's my that's the fucking ADHD kicking in, bro, or whatever the fuck, right? Should I put this hat back on or should I grab another hat? That's crazy. My shit is all fucking sweaty. That's wild. I already got my shit full of sweat. I just bought this hat. I'm flabbergasted. Right, so. Let me just fix my hair. All right. Okay. That didn't do shit because my whole shit right here is looking like a fucking cockatoo. Let me grab another hat. Okay. To put this to sleep, I don't think Mog dissed me. Uh, I don't think it's cool that he said that he deserved royalties because it's like, like, who are you going to get royalties from? Like what do you what do you need royalties for? I don't understand it. Um, do you like? I, it just kind of contradicts a, a lot of things that he said. And the fucking mic went down. I already know it did. Ah, oh, my god, Mike Stan, I'm gonna beat you the fuck up once we get off of this thing. I feel like it's his opinion, but at the same time, why do you feel like you need royalties? You know, we're all inspired by people. We're all, you know, it's not like I sampled you. It's not like fucking I went out of my way to copy and paste a lot of what he did. Like a lot of other a lot of other rappers, you know what I mean? Uh, Straight fucking jack his titles. I don't want to name them, but literally people have copied mock to a certain degree, a certain T. And I think. At that point, yes, you know, maybe you do deserve something, you know, Um, but regardless, influence is influence. And who's to say that you deserve anything off of influence? You know what I mean? You deserve credit for sure. You deserve your respect and your credit and the accolades that come with that. But money like like financially and any sort of like in and perpetuity financially, all that is kind of like, hmm. I don't know about that one. Uh, Peace to Mock. I think, you know, I think I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, he encouraged me to rap and he fucking, he really, he looked out for me when he didn't like need to, like in a sense, you know, he, he didn't have to tell me, yo dog, keep, you know, rapping and shit like that. He could have just been like, you know, do your thing and fucking, yeah, he could have just been like, do your thing. Or he could have not said anything at all, which it just goes to show. That's why I think it kind of disappoints me even more because, like, when when we first chopped it up on Instagram, when he had an Instagram, a lot of people don't know that he did have an Instagram. Was this shit here the whole time? Fucking A, dude. Look at that. 
Just fucking having my equipment all the way the fuck. You can see Snorlax and all my other shit over there. Fuck. I keep distracting myself. It's all good. But basically, like, what I'm trying to say is... Um... I take I take it a heart because it's like I'm looking at you like you can do no wrong and now a lot of a lot of things that what you're saying in your opinions is kind of like chipping off that image that I have and I guess that's why I say no don't meet your idols you know don't put people on pedestals because they'll they'll disappoint you um and I don't even feel like he fully disappointed me it's just some of the things that I mean he's human and he can have these opinions and shit it's just like you know what I mean it's uh it's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. But regardless, he makes great music. Um, even if I do th- look at him like as a shitty person or whatever, which I don't, it doesn't uh, affect the way I think of him as an artist. You know, he's just a great artist. And he's like unfuckwittable, you know what I mean? Um, and it's funny because I was working and one of, one of my coworkers, you know, I like, I like, fucking with people and shit but one of my co-workers was like oh you're a bully you know what i mean and i never looked at myself that way and like it it explains a lot of the reasons i get into like heat with people because i'm looking at it as you're fucking soft and you're a pussy but really it's like my personality you know and i never thought of myself as a bully until this fool brought it up and I'm thinking like, hmm, am I a fucking bully? Like, what is that? And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like trying to understand my personality. And I would say at times for sure, not all the way, like give me your chips and like, you know, what you got on my 40 and all that shit. But more so like, I feel like it was out of necessity because growing up, I couldn't really be soft. I couldn't, I wasn't really allowed to be, you know, that's why I say like, I was so uh as a as a young man i was so gung-ho on being like this gangster ass fool that i never really was it's just i felt like i had to develop a a hard exterior shell to protect my inner emotions and inner character and all that shit you know what i mean so yeah i had to develop like like a a bully like attitude towards other people i felt were weak um, and it just tripped me out because I never even looked at myself that way until, you know, I, I, he said that and then I backtracked like, oh, okay, I could understand how people feel that way. But then also too, I don't really mean to be a dickhead or a bully or all that. I just like fucking around with fools. And I feel like if you can handle that with me and if you can understand that that's like my coping mechanism to be like moving around the world then i understand like you're cool with me you know what i mean like me and chava have that dynamic where he fucks with me a lot i fuck with him and it's like it's weird because i i know he said shit to me that he knows made me feel uncomfortable and the other way so we find this middle ground where okay we're not i know how i know how far you like to joke around so there's the line and i'm only gonna step up to that line and he knows how far he can step up to the line with me and that's the silver lining in the fucking in the cl- thunderstorm and all that shit. You know, as they say, like, we don't s- try to step on each other's toes. And I think that that that's what you got to realize about yourself. Who are you in this world? Are you a fucking are you dependent? Are you codependent? Are you independent? What is it that what are your triggers and your tra- childhood traumas? Because the more I felt just because someone calls you something doesn't mean it's 100% true and it doesn't mean it's 0% right or wrong or whatever, right? I had to really reevaluate myself and be like, yeah, there is times where I've punked people that shouldn't have been punked and then there's other times where I felt like I punked people because I really felt like, okay, enough was enough. Now your ass needs to get put in check. And there, I'm not going to lie, there's some times where I've stepped over the line and I didn't say I was sorry because I felt like, you know what? You deserved it, and this is rare. You deserved it because the uh, you didn't handle it the right way. Like, there was this dude where I told him, I was like, yo, you're fucking, like, why would you name yourself? Like, this fool gave himself a nickname, 
And I didn't understand it, but he didn't let me finish what I was saying. And he, he blew up in my face all like, well, who are you and all this shit? Like, you know, what kind of name is Serbs and all this shit? And I was just like, I didn't even respond to this fool because it's like, oh, OK, like you're a pussy. You're soft. You blew up on, in my face because I said I didn't like your name. That tells me you you didn't experience anything heavy going up, growing up in life. You know, they're soft. You could tell people are soft. You look them in their eyes and you could tell you've never been through shit. I could tell your best homie didn't commit suicide. I could tell your homies didn't get smoked by the cops. I I, I could just tell. We we know. We know the truth. And long live the ruler. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a lot of people that I encounter that I feel like you're soft as fuck. I don't even associate myself around you because there's no way. Like, how are you going to, how can we even relate? You know, me and Chava, we have so many similarities and so many, like, you know, he's like three years older than me, but fucking, I feel like we're on this like level of understanding because of shit that we've been in our lives. He's probably experienced more struggle than me. And who's to say who's struggled more than who? But it's just like, at least I've had a taste for it. You know what I mean? When I think about my struggles, and we were just talking about this, when I think about my struggles and the shit that I had to go through in life, you know, when I get anxiety and shit like that, I think about my grandma and what she had to do growing up. Getting pulled out of third grade. She got a third grade education, bro. She had to pick the fucking fields to support the family. She didn't she didn't get to have a fucking childhood. She had to support her brothers, her sisters, her mom, everybody. And she owns property and she makes she when she retired, not that she fucking worked a nine to five out that I know of. I know she had she was always a, a self-made businesswoman, my grandmother. I don't remember her having a nine to five. She owned like a lonchera truck that my mom worked out of. You know, when she came from Mexico over here, my grandma gave her a job. My mom worked for my grandma. And that's the grandmother I know. My grandma was like a lot like my mom, my mother to me. You know what I mean? With my ass, fed me, you know, gave me a place to stay when no one wanted to give me a place to stay over some fuck shit. So whatever. And it's like going back to the mock shit where he's like, shit gets really small, really fast because our elders that had to pay the price for our freedoms went through a lot more shit than we did. You know, I fucking bitch and complain when I have to do like some of the most remedial tasks or is remedial the right word or or the most mini minuscule tasks and all that. And it's just like, it's really like the way I grew up. Like I don't want to deal with shit. So I just kind of like bitch and complain about it. But that's like, you know what I mean? Uh, um, That's just how I get when I feel like, I, I want to just chill and shit just gets to me and I, I get mad that I can't do music the way I want to. I can't do the things I want to creatively, artistically, because I need to support myself and my family. It, it like it really pisses me off and it puts me in a fucked up mood, but it could be a lot worse, you know, and it's just about finding like, yeah, yeah, like I get it, bro. The shit, you know, it's a little bit of a struggle, but it ain't the end of the world. I'm going to live tomorrow. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make my money and I'm going to come home. You know what I mean? That's the difference versus fools literally have to risk their lives every day just for like a better situation. You know what I mean? So very cool topics. We're already off to like, I feel like we're on like a strong starting shit. Um, Let's see. <laughs> And I mean, just touching on the subject, man, like my pops is the best, bro. Like I have, I feel like I have the best father in the world. Like my dad, I had like a, for the longest time, me and my dad weren't cool. And then before that, for the longest time, me, me and my dad are cool. Me and my dad are definitely, I feel like tighter than ever now. But um, I don't think I've ever said this publicly, but I, I just try not to, when it comes to like my parents, I don't like saying much because people are fucking weird and I'll smoke somebody over some stupid shit. But like. Um, I feel I, I th- like when they say like my dad is my superhero or whatever, like I feel like my dad is dope as fuck. You know what I mean? Um, he fucking did a lot, bro, uh, to support our family. He 
sacrifice a lot out of necessity and whatever dreams and shit that he had or whatever like i don't know about like pff, fuck all that you know what i mean it's time to grind it's time to get to to get your money up because you know we live in cali and cali has a very interesting way of saying fuck your dreams you got to figure out how you can make a million dollars a year before you know poverty strikes at any moment or whatever it is just we're living in crazy like a crazy time right now and just it wasn't any easier for my dad you know i know my dad he's talked about he's he's talked to me about how like he would search in the fucking couches for quarters just so he could get a whopper at burger king you know when whoppers were 99 cents we're talking about the 90s uh barely making it um living in like one of uh what's you know like just living in like difficult circumstances you know what i mean and my dad that's kind of like the father my sister grew up with you know what i mean like just struggling and shit by the time i was born i i feel like i was kind of born into like money at that point uh but then not really because my grandmother took care of me a lot so i, I knew what was what it was like to have both situations to like you know parents were always working i was with my grandmother and then, like, being around, like, my parents and, you know, eating good. So, I'm not going to say I lived, like, like a porre or anything like that. Like, if I'm from the fucking projects, that's far from it. You know, I live very, very well. A, a lot more than a lot of my other family members. And that's why it just goes back to, like, my fucking dad is the illest. Like, just because of, like, his whole mentality. You know what I mean? His whole... His whole his whole shit like it took a lot for him to be like i can't deal with your shit anymore you know and like you know and fucking looking back it's like he had every right to do that because i can only imagine being in his in his situation and doing everything that he thought he did right and then you feel like it just doesn't work so now you feel like you have to kick your son out of your house like i get it you know um but even me coming back home and him helping me, you know, get this holler that I have now and helping me out with all these like bullshit ass situations. It's like it's crazy. You know what I mean? It really got me thinking like about my family and my pop. And it's just like if I could have a family and like be like half the man my pops is, I feel like I made it in life. Because I would not put up with the shit my pops put up with at all. And I'm not going to get in depth with that. But it's just point blank period. I would not tolerate any of the shit. I wouldn't. And I feel like everyone has their own destiny. And I feel like God put me here for a certain purpose. And my purpose is not to put up with that shit. So, you know what I mean? I love my pop, you know. Give him his flowers right here. You know, motherfucking Louis son, homie. Um, and it's funny because like it just going back to like the bully shit and and all that like w with this island shit. Th there's this young dude. He's like twenty. Uh, did I talk about this or what? I feel like I did, but I'm gonna whatever, right? I'm gonna give it to y'all anyway. Uh, they were talking. They were telling him he's like twenty or uh, twenty, right? Which is like super young to be making this kind of money. And they were telling him, "Yo, save up, buy a house." Uh, don't buy stupid shit, get a 401, 457 or whatever that shit is called, you know, be right with your money. And they're all giving them all this like extra shit, right? Like, oh dog, this is what you got to do. You got to get crypto. You got to get this. You got to get that. You know what I mean? Stack up fucking, uh, uh, LLCs and all this shit. And I was just like, man, stop giving this full advice. You, you, you all swear that this fool is going to actually save up his money. He's 20, bro. Y'all swear he's going to save up his money and do everything right because you told him to. Nah, man, what he's going to do is he's going to buy a fucking crazy expensive car. He's going to fucking fuck his credit up. He's going to get a girl pregnant. He's going to get in depth, run up his credit. You know what I mean? And they were like, oh, how could you say that? And like, nah, man, that's fucked up, man. Well, I want to tell him, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, you know what I mean? But going back to, like, me thinking people are soft and being like, fuck you. You know what I mean? But 
I'm like, I'm kidding, fool. Like, I'm fucking around with y'all. Like, do you know the advice I was given when I was 20? I was probably given all the best advice that anyone could tell me. And obviously, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't work anywhere that gave me a 450 or 457 and all that. So that shit wasn't even possible. When I was 20, my mind set was completely on bullshit. You know what I mean? And that's what I was trying to say. Like, you could tell him everything, but unless he actually goes and experiences what it's like to be in debt and fucking all this other shit that makes you realize, oh, I need to be go with my money. You know what I mean? He's not going to learn. And that was my point. But when they started getting super mad about it, I started getting super mad about it. And then I was like, you know what? Just shut In my head, I was like, shut the fuck up. Like, don't say anything anymore because you're around the fucking peanut gallery that's just worried about peanut butter, uh, peanut butter cover bullshit. You know what I mean? Uh, which I thought that was wicked. You know what I mean? I thought it was funny. But yeah, like these young kids are, you know, they're going to get a girl pregnant party all the time, barely sleep, you know, and hopefully they wise up later, you know, and they and they teach the next the youth. But that's what it is, is like when you're young, you're fucking dumb. The old your elders are going to try to teach you. You're not going to have the wisdom to actually put that knowledge into practice, that's why knowledge comes before wisdom, and then understanding is after that. If you don't know these things, how the fuck are you going to uh, have the wisdom? And then if you don't have the wisdom, how are you going to understand these things? Going back to the mathematics, you got to know. As soon as I went through stupid shit, like getting high, that put the knowledge in my head. Oh, I'm fucking myself up here. I'm getting no money. All my money is going to these fucking bullshit habits. Stop it. That gave me the wisdom. I needed to have some sort of understanding that, oh, maybe doing drugs isn't the best option here. So that's my whole point. To all the youth out there, I don't want anybody getting these messages misconstrued. I love all the youth out there, the ones that are getting ready to be the future builders of the world, y'all are the futures, the, the future, and I, wa- I just want y'all to know that I have your best interests at heart. I don't want y'all thinking I'm come up, I'm coming up in this podcast game to shit on nobody. Like I want y'all to take something from this. Don't look at this as some ha ha ha. Like oh, big serves. He's wearing a stupid little fucking hat and he's talking about a dog or some shit like that. Like no, bro. I really want you to take something away from this something right now there may be episodes that i talk bullshit but not today today we have a mission and what is the mission bitches (laughs) that's what i'm trying to say bro we gotta get a little balance we can have fun but we gotta be serious too uh bj's pazuki pass hold on now uh, BJ's, the Chicago brewery, uh, they coming out with, with a pazuki. If y'all don't know what that is, it's a fucking, it's just like a, a cookie thing and they put scoops of ice cream on it. Bomb as fuck. The only thing is they put it in like some metal tin aluminum thing. And then once your spoon hits that fucking thing and you taste it, you get the metal in your mouth. Like if you got, you just trying to be uh, sweet see and you got a Beretta in your fucking noggin. Ugh, it tastes fucking weird. I wish they'd serve it in like a plate cause it, it, it would negate the metalness or like what a plastic fork. Um, but it just, it just tastes fucking weird. It tastes like you're sucking, you're eating nickel ice cream. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, their BJ's is coming out with something where you pay like a certain fee a month and you get like a fucking pazuki. I'm down for that. I'll just go. Cause like BJ's, uh, their steak ain't, they ain't that really that good. And the pizzas, whatever. Like I can't even eat pizza cause I'm lactose. But the pazuki, I'm all for it. So fucking BJ's, if you want to sponsor the God's Hour podcast, we I definitely need a million dollars and I will promote you further on this podcast. Right? What else we got? What else we got? Let's talk about everything I got. Let's talk about Oh, uh the Bike Riders movie was really good. Uh with fucking what's his name? Uh Ed Hardy, Tom Hardy, Venom, Fire. I don't know if I talked about this, but it was a really good movie. It was like right up my alley and make a left to where it was like it had like elements of like the the street shit, like brotherhood, loyalty. That's the the shit I'm into. And what I love is that they don't glorify street shit. I don't. Uh, spoiler alert: Tom Hardy, he's the leader of the bike rider. Uh, they're called the Vandals from Chicago. Speaking of Chicago, 
and he gets murked by the young kids that are coming up. The times are changing, and the the younger guard the the, the is like completely not with the the old school shit. And they pop him, and you think they're gonna go out like fist to cuffs and pull out the knives on him? No, he just smokes him right when they were supposed to like go heads up. So it's it's a great movie. Um, it kind of does have a happy ending for that life. That's like the happiest ending you could get, where the homie just retires being a a biker and he's like a mechanic and he just chills with his wife and I think they have a son or whatever. That's the best outcome you can you can ever ask for. Uh it really made me think of my pop. You know, my pop uh for you know like the first whatever six years of his life he was in he was born and raised a little bit in Boyle Heights, then uh moved to Southgate, which is fucking like just a fucking stone's throw away from the street life and then, you know, move out of that um, when he was in high school. So my dad was, from what I know, he was never in a no street shit. My Uncle Willie, you know, tried to keep him out of that. But my Uncle Willie, he got shot in the head, repping the hood. You know, didn't get no medals, didn't get no fucking awards or pension from that shit. He just got shot in the head, ended up in a wheelchair and passed away down the line from his you know, from his what, you know, whatever complications due to his injury. And my father, he became a mechanic. He's now a fucking supervisor. And, you know, I couldn't be any more proud of my dad because that's, it's not like he was like a street dude, but he came from the street life in a way. And he fucking, he made uh, 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 decisions that set him up for life, which in turn is setting me up for life. You know what I mean? I try to dibble and dabble in street shit that wasn't for me. And I glad I, I'm glad I smartened up and I just got out of that shit right away. And I understood the pitfalls way later, but that's okay. At least I learned. And I'm here. So fuck it. As long as we learn and we live, we're Gucci. Actually, we're not. We're imper- Imperial. Imperial. Imperial World Order. Yeah. Right. What else we got? What else we got? Uh, fo- the phone is tracking my use- uh, usage, bro. I don't know if I talked about this, and I said that a lot. I must have said this is the fourth time I probably said that. I don't care. Uh, but it's like, oh, here's your trip. Here's the 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 longest trip you took. You know, a thousand miles going around. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, don't tell me that shit. Or when it tells you you used your phone six more hours this week than last week, it's like, great, Samsung, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll switch to uh, Apple iPhone or something. Here we go. Me plugging other shits. But maybe I'll go to another provider since you guys want to be all in my fucking business. Like, didn't your mama tell you, you know what I mean? Mind your fucking business, bro. Get the fuck out of here with that weirdo shit. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah, bro. Just, it's crazy. People are fucking crazy. People are fucking crazy. Um... Not people are crazy, but this shit was wicked as fuck. You know, phone tracking my usage. Like, fuck off, bro. Let's see. What else do we got? Danny Trejo was assaulted at a parade. Did y'all see this shit? It's kind of old, but Danny Trejo, he... I forgot what happened, but... Yo, let me see this shit real quick. Danny Trejo. Nah, man. This was some bullshit. When I seen this shit, I'm like, some tough guys. You know, be, is Danny Trejo, like, in his 80s? Assault. He gets in a fight. Let's see. Let's see. A water balloon was thrown at his head. He got out of the car. Oh, he started fighting the fool that threw a water. Oh, my God. That's so disrespectful, bro. Why would you do that? That's crazy, bro. Oh, okay. So he confronted the guy and then they threw balloons at him. And then, bro, this is fucking sad. What the fuck? What the fuck? Some young dude... Oh, fucking hit Danny Hard and his homie. Let me see this shit again. Oh, 
Bro, that's bullshit. Wow. Like, this goes back to, like, why I think people are stupid as fuck. People are fighting. You didn't get no points in the hood, homie, for fucking beating up some... Beating up the elderly, bro. Like, those are our elders, bro. And you're over here making an ass out of yourself. And with social media and all the people on their phones, it's like, you're a fucking idiot, bro. Like, you're not tough. You swung on on senior citizens, bro, that probably know people that will fucking get you smoked. And maybe he knew or maybe he didn't know, but that's bullshit. I think that's corny as fuck. We'll give, we'll give dumb fuck of the week to this clown right here beating up... Danny Trejo and his and his homie like you're not you're not a you're not a gangster you're really not you know what I mean real gangsters fucking defend the elderly and whoever jumped in on behalf of of Danny Trejo and all that good for y'all I pre I appreciate that but dumb fuck of the week goes to whoever this fucking clown was bro that was bullshit you know when I see things like that any any shit that has to do with people punking kids or just being bullies, or making fun of the special needs, or the elderly, or even doing shit like that, or just being rah-rah for no reason, y'all get dumb fucks of the fucking universe, bro, Stri- seriously, we need to give y'all some medals for being dumb fucks, holy fucking guacamole and chips, we got one more, what else we got, this fucking, uh, this gang, oh, actually, we got two more, three more, gang, uh, this fuck, it's a mafia oil, mafia oil, bro, this gas station is about what is it? If if this one gas station is four forty, which is like the lowest I've ever seen uh, gas out here in Cali, it's about four twenty with the debit card. And if you're playing straight up, paying straight up cash, uh, it's fucking uh, four ten. That's wicked, bro. That's fucking sick as fuck. Um, yeah, they're they're hooked up with the mafia. Like, how are you selling oil like that? Like, there's no way. There's no way. And it's specifically that gas station, not even the company, because there used to be another company there. And then I feel like they just changed the name or something like that. Or maybe if they like hiked it, um, it's the same owners or something, because, bro, that's crazy. I don't know how they could do that. I, th- literally, it's always packed. And it's just 20 cents less a ga- uh, gallon less if you're fucking paying cash. Uh, no, no, 30 cents and then 20 less if you're fucking paying with debit, which I do. Um, I think it's wicked. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out to all the mafia members out there that are making it easier for everybody else for gas. You know what I mean? I don't want to advocate for like violence or anything like that. But I guess if you are going to be on some street organization shit, you might as well do something for everybody else. Right. Like Robin Hood. Like, yeah, he stole from people, but he gave out. So, you know. Uh, I'm not going to advocate for the mafia, but it's just like, whatever, you know, break some eggs and make an omelet if you can make it deliciously, right? The locks. Tiny Desk, they smoke that shit. They're going to be playing in the House of Blues, and I think they'll also be in Santa Ana this year. Hopefully, man, hopefully, I got to think about this because San Diego is a two-hour drive. The show starts at 7. That means I got to leave the crib at 4.30 just to be like half an hour early, get a good parking spot and all that shit. And then it'll probably end like around 12 in the morning, which means I won't be here till 2. And then I have work the same fucking day. So it's like, I don't know. I got to weigh my options. But they smoked the tiny desk, bro. They they did um, uh, By Your Side, Jada Kiss, and they did a few other shits that were hard as fuck. But they smoked it. Like, that's what made me uh, get into the locks for the first place because they're really great performers and I feel like they're underrated as fuck. Like, definitely coming out of the 90s and of the early 2000s, they're one of the most underrated rappers. Uh, and I listen to their shit now. Like, I barely started listening to their music. I feel like Styles got the best solo album. I didn't really like Kiss of Death. It has some of the better lock songs or uh, Jada songs on it, but I feel like styles as a better album like as far as like the messages the songs the hooks yada yada uh chic has a really good album uh has a good album too but i feel like that's like the weakest i'll say like you know uh gangster and a gentleman uh kiss of death walk with me right um so if anyone hasn't seen it the locks has a really dope uh performance on the tiny desk and i think it, it changes the dynamic from you know, they're, they're not screaming over the boom bat beats. It's like real jazzy, real, you know, uh, uh, it's live. 
and then it's just them like wrapping up there giving the performance it's really dope it really gives like a fresh perspective on the songs and that's what I love about performing music. It's like you're not going to get the same performance every time out of me because it's like, you know, I might get in a different pocket or whatever. You know, I stop. I don't like performing the same songs, but I feel like I kind of like perform the same songs until I feel like I perfected it. Once I feel like I perfected the song and did like a great performance, like at the last show I did at the Bull Heights, uh, the Boulevard Bar. I don't think I'm ever going to do those songs again because that was like the magnum opus of those songs, those performances. I'm never I feel I'm never I feel like I'm never going to perform those songs better ever again. So we're, it's time to scrap those songs. And you got to be willing to do that as a as an artist, as a performing artist. You got to be willing to scrap your set and make some more shit, uh, make some new shit and make it happen. Now, if they're fan favorites and people want to see them, like, go ahead, stick with that. But like, make sure you're rotating your songs. Um, right, so let's get into the album of the day, goes to Styles P, A Gangster and a Gentleman, I give it a B plus, it sounds a little dated, but it's, I feel like it's evolutionary for the time, it's a solid body of work with a strong message that the street life is hard, it's, like he says, it's a lot of, a lot of downs, very little ups, and I literally cry in that album when he talks about, you know, my brother, the song. He talks about his little brother, Gary. And it's phenomenal. It, it'll make you, it, it, for me, it makes me laugh, like with the ass bag skit. It made me cry with his brother. It made me feel like stabbing somebody with like songs like, y'all know we in here. I'm a, I'm a rough rider. Uh, it makes me want to like fucking like, you know, dance and shit like a uh, uh, soul clap and a, uh, um, What's the song with Eve? I came to rough, fry to die. You know, uh, forgot that song with Eve. But Eve killed it. Eve has a sick ass verse. And um, yeah, just some of the best uh Locks verses are on uh Gangster and a Gentleman. And it's so funny because there's a skit with uh he's talking about there's some dude named Sticks, and he's like, I'm gonna have to take care of business and all that. He's talking about Styles P. And then later on in the skit, Styles is like, he's like, he's talking, you know, they're having an argument about some money. And then one of them is, one of his homies is like, Sticks is talking about bodying you and all that. And, and, and you can hear Styles, he's like, bodying me? And and he was like, no, no. He's like, I said me and, me and Holiday, I might have to body something. He's all, you talking about bodying me? And he's all, what? No, he's all, don't fuck up now. What, what was his exact words? He's all, matter of fact, sticks. These is your words. Boom, boom, boom. And that shit is hard as fuck. That's one of the greatest skits of all time. Locks always got the illest skits. So yeah, if you haven't heard it, I've, I've heard uh, "Gangster and a Gentleman" a bunch of times now. But I think it's a solid album. I can always go back to it. Uh, song favorites: Soul Clap. I'm a, a Rough Rider. Y'all know we in here. Obviously, good times um am i missing any my brother always makes me cry always tears me up because i think about raul and ian and josh because i grew up with them um gangster and uh gentleman <laughs> i'm a rough rider weed smoking gun toting heroin supplier black magic what song was that? I don't remember that song. What the fuck? I don't what's funny is I don't even like know these songs. I just like I don't even remember. I just play the fucking album and I don't I could care less. Like that's the thing we've lost. Like just listening to albums. Like I'm from where you would put a CD in the car and it would say track one. You know, you'd be like, oh track five is my favorite shit. Now you don't even do that, you know the whole shit. What the hell? I've never heard this song. Really? That's crazy. Why haven't I heard this song? I've dead ass heard. I thought the playlist I was listening to had the whole album. Wow, that's crazy. That kind of pokes a hole in my whole review. Daddy Get That Cash is funny. Lick Shots is a dope song. 
yeah, We Thugs. That's a fucking hard ass song. In the beginning, so, uh, uh, Kiss is like, woo! That shit is fucking funny as fuck. Uh, uh, uh. The one, the song with MOP, I don't, I, I kind of don't like that song. The blocka, 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 blocka. It's like, okay, dog. All right, fame. Time to skip this shit. Nobody believes me. My hammer talked to me. Nobody believes that my hammer talked to. That shit's hard as fuck. That the life with fucking Feral Watch. Let me see. Styles P. The life. I just heard a fucking um, a Styles P or Locks freestyle where they're dissing beans. That shit is hard as hell. Let's see. The beat's hard. What the hell? I've never even heard this shit. That's crazy. I don't know. Any Anyway, we're still promoting Styles P. I'm going to go back and listen to the songs anyway that I haven't heard. Um, Message of the day, man. Appreciate uh, your loved ones, man. Because, uh, you know, I feel like my pop, you know, he looked out for me when he didn't have to. Like a lot of fathers are like, I don't like you're going to learn the hard way. And that's it. Like my father did everything he could to get me out of a lot of shit, you know. And uh, it took him a lot for him to just say fuck it. And even when he said fuck it, it wasn't even for that long. So appreciate what you have, the people around you, and your blessings, man. Never forget your blessings are always around you. You got to be just willing to look at them and thank God. I thank God every day for all the blessings I have. Thank God, thank God, thank God. You know, just being appreciative, you know, having that just like maturity and just putting your ego inside and saying, bro, maybe I don't have everything I have. But I have everything I need. Maybe I'm not, I'm not the man I want to be today, but I can be the man I, I want to be tomorrow. And with that, this is the God's Hour. Max Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower. Uh -huh. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. Uh -huh. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. Uh -huh. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower. Uh -huh. To let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara. On the other side. Side of that gat is karma, he wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone.